guys welcome to Safi next in this video I would derive the orthogonality condition on the Eigen functions of Hermitian operators and from this condition I will define orthogonality and will introduce orthonormality condition on Eigen functions finally I would then discuss the significance of such functions in evaluating the behavior of physical quantities to this end let a be a Hermitian operator with two different eigenfunction psi m and psi n and let the corresponding eigenvalues be lambda m and lambda sub n respectively then according to eigenvalue equation we can write the following two equation a applied to psi m results in lambda m times psi, psi m and a applied to psi n results in lambda n times psi n now taking the complex conjugate of equation 2 we can write it as complex conjugate of a applied to psi n equals lambda n steric psi n steric where I have used the fact that eigenvalues of Hermitian operators are real and have set lambda n steric equal to lambda n for the proof of this property of eigenvalues do watch my video on real eigenvalues of Hermitian operators now multiplying equation 1 from left with psi n steric we can put it into the form psi n steric times a times psi m equals lambda m times psi n steric psi m similarly multiplying equation 3 with psi, psi m from the right I can write a psi n whole steric times psi m equals lambda n psi n steric psi m you see in equation 4 I have changed the position of eigenvalue lambda m with respect to eigenfunction psi n steric note that this is an allowed operation for numbers now subtracting equation 5 from equation 4 we can put the result into this equation where the first term on the left is the left side of equation 4 and the second term on the left is the left side of equation 5 and the same procedure and the same sequence is followed at the right side and we see from the right side we can take psi n steric psi m common from the two terms and can put them into the form lambda m minus lambda n times psi n steric psi m now integrating equation 6 over the whole space we can write the result into this form where I have just integrated the two sides of the equation with respect to volume dv from minus infinity to plus infinity if you carefully observe the left side of this equation is just the hermeticity condition on operator a and if you don't know about hermeticity condition I would suggest you to watch my video on hermeticity of operators according to hermeticity condition the left side of this equation is zero this lead us to write the equation into this final form now the two eigenvalues as per our initial assumption are different therefore lambda m minus lambda n cannot be equal to zero the only choice for the above equation to be zero is that the integral part is zero this equation set the orthogonality condition on the eigenfunctions of operators that is if the space integral of the product of a function with complex conjugate of another eigenfunction is zero the two functions are said to be orthogonal although the orthogonality is a fundamental trait of the eigenfunctions of Hermitian operators but it is not necessary that all the eigenfunctions of a Hermitian operator be orthogonal 
For example, the eigen functions of degenerate eigen values are not necessarily orthogonal. However, such eigen functions can be made orthogonal with the approach of Schmidt orthonormalization procedure, like a set of basis vector for a finite dimensional space. Orthogonal functions can form an infinite basis for a function space. Conceptually, this integral is equivalent to the dot product of vectors, where we know that two vectors are mutually independent, that is orthogonal, if their dot product becomes zero. So orthogonality of two function means that they are independent of each other. The orthogonality condition on eigenfunctions helps in reducing the mathematical complexity in solving theoretical problems in quantum mechanics.